On April 23, 2022, law enforcement responded to numerous emergency calls reporting gunfire and initiated an inquiry. During this time, Aaron was lodging at a nearby hotel, while his companions were staying at another hotel just a short distance away. They had journeyed to Colorado to participate in a marksmanship contest. Following the street shooting earlier, Aaron visited a convenience store at a gas station to purchase supplies and contact his friends. Upon their delayed arrival, they stopped at a gas station in two nearly identical cars, with Aaron waiting as they shopped. Subsequently, multiple police officers approached Aaron's vehicle. I went to a gas station this morning to grab some stuff, and they were saying there was a shooting at 3 o'clock in the morning. There was a shooting at 3 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, so, um, you know, at one of the shady f***ing hotels or something, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so, so they have... They have traffic blocked going to, going out on the 70. So we might want to look to see if that, that's going to impact our route. Is that you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Can I help you? Yeah. You want to roll down your window real quick? No. What do you need? I need you to identify yourself. No, why? Uh, because... All right. Leaving the area. Hold on. Don't worry, this is being recorded as well. I know, I know but, but your recording is a lot easier, or it's a lot harder to get versus mine. Okay, so. well, can you please roll down your window more? No. So talk to you? No. What do you need? All right, well, I need to identify you. No, you do not. My name is Officer Pesetis with the Grand Junction Police Department. All right? So this is my corporal right here. This is Corporal Church. Okay. As well. Okay. All right, so I need you to identify yourself. No, that's not how it works. I have rights as an American citizen, right? Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah, you have to suspect me of committing an actual crime in order to identify. Failing to identify is a secondary offense. You have to have an actual charge or you have to suspect me of committing a crime. You don't have that. You have nothing. I'm not going to identify simply because you because 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 you see me park and you want to come up and identify me. That's not how it works. So, okay, so here, I'll, here, I'll clarify some things for you so you understand why I'm coming up and okay. trying to contact you right now. Okay. okay. Earlier in the night, there was a shooting that occurred right near the travel lodge. Okay. And your car is similar in description, a dark colored sedan. To okay. The suspect vehicle. Okay. All right. All right. So you're seen leaving the travel lodge. Right? Okay. You have information that's where the suspect might have come from. Okay. All right. Okay, but, but, do you have actual do you have a license plate number? Do you have a description of the person? Do you have anything? No, you 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 do not have articulable suspicion that I've done anything. I do. No, you do not. Yeah. No, you do not. I, I am I am not going to identify. Okay, no. If you fail to identify yourself, I'm going to pull you out of this car and detain you for obstruction. Right? No. Because right now you're interfering with my investigation. No, I I've done I you 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 do you do oh, oh okay so so. You have to have reasonable, articulable suspicion that I have committed a crime. What crime do you suspect me of committing? Possible attempted homicide. Possible attempted homicide. Yes. You suspect me, actual me, of committing possible attempted homicide. Well, your cooperative behavior right now does not help your cause. No. Being cooperative or 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 uncooperative I'm not giving up my rights when you when you when you give up your rights you lose your rights eventually I have rights as a free American I've done absolutely nothing I pulled into a gas station because my friends are here because we're going to excuse me two people also stated that one of the suspects may be of African American descent okay. well it's not me I've done nothing I am not going to identify because you don't have that right to 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 take that right from me. I've done nothing, nothing at all. So if you've done nothing wrong, all you gotta do is identify nope. yourself, nope. and then we that's, get. To that's that's not how it works. That's how people lose their rights because 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 law enforcement is always like, well, if you've done nothing, then 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 you shouldn't be afraid. No, that's I, that I, is that is intimidation fa factors. Aaron, I just need your information. Absolutely not. No. Officer Posadas then directed Corporal Church to engage with Aaron's friends. The initial incident reports regarding the early morning shooting indicated the search for two suspects in a dark sedan. 
a black male, and a white male. However, Officer Posadas only mentioned the race of one suspect in Aaron's vehicle. While Aaron's friends matched the description of the white suspect, law enforcement did not question them. Moreover, at this juncture, based on incident reports, authorities were aware of the identity of the black male suspect they were pursuing. Shortly after conversing with Aaron's friends and checking Aaron's license plate, the police confirmed that Aaron was not the individual they were seeking. Despite releasing Aaron's friends, they detained Aaron at the scene. You know, what's funny, my buddies that just left, they were also in a dark sedan. A dark sedan, right? But you guys aren't questioning them, why? Answer me why, please. They were in a dark sedan. The exact same color, actually. The exact same color, and we're going to, to a competition. You said that one of the suspects was identified as, or may have been identified as, as a black American, right? But which, which, which means that, that there might have been a second suspect, right? Was the second suspect white or 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 Mexican, Hispanic, whatever, right? But you aren't stopping them and questioning them. You stop me. And you wonder why motherfuckers have such a difficult time understanding how law enforcement does shit. They were in a dark sedan, dude. A dark exact same color as mine. And you did not stop them and questioning them. You're doing it to me. Well, I'm sorry nope. I'm sorry shut you your mouth. I don't want to talk to you. Tell you, how to talk, all right? uh, you shut your mother mouth. I am the absolute last person to ever bring up race about anything, man. I don't ever bring that up. But I find it hard to believe that my buddy's car, dark sedan, exact same color, dark gray, we leave at the exact same time he doesn't get stopped. Are you not cooperative? Because I don't, I don't have to be cooperative with your investigation. Well, you have to ID yourself. Right? No, I do not. Please give me your name and your badge number, please. Well, no, I won't give you that right now. What do you mean you won't? This is this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever no, encountered. Would you like me to explain the reason I'm asking you? For your I would like your name and badge number, please, first. So you don't want me to explain the reason. I would like your name and badge number first. For the record, name and badge number first. I am willing to explain to you the reason that I asked these officers to stop you. Oh my Before God. Please, please identify yourself. I'll trade you. No, that's not how it works. I have a right to not... I think that's fair. No, it's not fair. It's, it's, it's the law, man. It's not that hard. You're, you are, you are law, you are law enforcement. Huh? You're, a, you're disobeying the law. I'm not disobeying the you law. You are. I am not disobeying the law. I don't, I, I'm abiding by, by the law. You're you guys right. are not. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Smile yes. it up. Smile it up, because this is going to be on freaking YouTube, and you're going to be famous. Smile it up. All right, Mr. Booker, you have a nice day. Good luck at your shooting competition. F*** off, man. The interaction extended for about 30 minutes. Subsequently, Aaron Booker enlisted legal representation, leading to a formal complaint and a notification of an impending civil lawsuit. This prompted an internal review by the police. During the review, Sergeant Steele, who had failed to identify himself and provide a badge number as per the policies of the Grand Junction Police and Colorado state law, claimed that it was unintentional and attributed it to forgetfulness. Following the internal affairs investigation, Grand Junction Police Chief Doug Shoemaker dismissed all allegations against his officers except for Sergeant Steele's failure to identify, for which the sergeant received verbal counseling. The Internal Affairs Report acknowledged Aaron Booker's driving as being highly suspicious, but noted that the police intervention was less intrusive than it could have been. However, Aaron Booker and his legal counsel are preparing to file a lawsuit against the Grand Junction Police Department. On November 29, 2022, officers Donald Genevs and Devin Taylor of the Ogden City Police Department responded to a call about squatters in a foreclosed home in Ogden, Utah. They found Rand Bream, 78, and his wife Vera Bream, 75, the property owners, at the scene. Mm 
That's what I am. Hey! What can I do for you, sir? So, are you guys supposed to be here? Supposed to be where? This house. <laughs> Our kid just came from the garage. Your kid came from the garage? I just came from the garage. Yeah, is this your residence? Yeah, that's my house. That's my garage. Okay, you... What are you, what, what are you doing? We got a complaint that this house was foreclosed on? No, the house isn't foreclosed on. Alright. You guys mind hanging tight for a second? Well, I've got to go. Where you got to go? What's that? What difference does that make? Closed to occupancy. I go. So yeah, you guys should not be here. What do you mean I should? So be? there's a closed to occupancy. I was back in the back. Well, for this property. No, it doesn't closed say that. Yes, it does. It's on the front door. Partner just told me that. Hey! Shut your car off. No. We need to get this settled. No. Sir. You're trespassing. No. Get out of the car. Come on. Come on. Out of the car. Now what's with you? We're getting what down to what's going on here, alright? We got a call. I am leaving. I've got a place to go. Hey, it doesn't matter. We got this to take care of right now. What, what is this? Where's, am I under gonna, arrest? No, sir. Am this, I, uh, uh, then am I free to go? No, you are not free to go. You are detained right now. We're trying to investigate. If I'm so, not under what is arrest, your name? I'm free to go. No, you are not. You are detained right now for investigation. For what? Ma'am. What investigation? For hell's sakes, you dumb shit! If you stop yelling, I'm trying to explain to you. We got a complaint from the neighbor. Said his house has been foreclosed on. No one should be here. It has you not been. You guys are here. It and has there is a no occupancy sign on the door as per my partner there. The officer contended that the Bream should not be at the house due to foreclosure, citing an anonymous call and a no occupancy sign on the door. However, the sign was a health department notice about the basement's chemical contamination, not a foreclosure or eviction notice. Even if the home was foreclosed, the Breams had the right to stay until it was sold. The old trespassing law required clear communication, fencing, or signs to bar entry, which the Breams didn't violate. An anonymous tip alone usually doesn't justify suspicion, and the notice didn't indicate eviction from the entire property. Therefore, it's unlikely the officers had reasonable suspicion that the Breams were trespassing. Uh, there is a sign on the door. So and what you makes you think I've been in there? That's the property. No trespassing. Yes, that's my sign I put up. So you're the owner of this property? I am. What is your name? You got a driver's license on you. I do. Can I get that from you? I'm not driving. You were just driving. I, not on I need to, sir, ma'am. I need you to stand over there. Okay, you have to identify yourself. You need it's to identify yourself. It doesn't matter. Ma I don't have to identify myself. Yes, I, I don't have to say yes, one yes, damn you thing. You do. That's fine. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I, I have the right to remain silent. Because guess what? Maybe you're not the owner, and we don't know that. If this was your house, you would want us to investigate, right? If people are hanging around your house, maybe you're some random person. I don't know that. Maybe I am. Okay, so we're gonna figure that out. I will show you my driver's license. Perfect. I will not give it to you. Okay, you need that in There it is. Your name, your date of birth, and your address. You, I, sir, hey. I told you I wasn't giving it to you. Well, I took it. Oh, yes. Okay, well, this is
When Mr. Bream tried to retrieve his driver's license taken without consent, officers pushed him against the house, threw him to the ground, and handcuffed him. The Supreme Court's factors from Graham v. Connor assessed the reasonableness of force, considering the crime severity, immediate threat, and resistance. The Tenth Circuit Court ruled in similar cases that using excessive force on nonviolent suspects without significant resistance is unlawful. Mr. Bream, suspected of a nonviolent offense, posed no threat and didn't resist aggressively. The force used against him would likely be seen as unreasonable and disproportionate in court. Hey, I get down. I'm an old man. Yeah, you have to sit on the bucket. You have to sit right here. Now, what is it you want? Told you several times. Told you several times. To identify yourself, you wanted, wanted to fight. fight. We're, We're trying, trying to investigate, investigate what's, what's going, going on. There is nothing going on. This is my property. Oh, you did. Okay, run the server. Twenty first and Harrison Point. That. Here, do I have to come out to? Twenty first and Harrison Point, southbound. O2 Gray Honda Civic, I know 28. Unable to maintain a lane, possible 10 by 5. Car is no longer in the area. Time lapse, two minutes. Female driver. I guess I should have come. Said come faster. 2729 on the number 153. Well, he was just detained until started grabbing people and trying to run people over, so. YouTube. What do you want now? Just chill out. You got my driver's license, you can see who I am. This is my house. You're trespassing on my property. Maybe you better call the SWAT team. I don't think you have enough backup. Are you going to give me my driver's license back? In a second. All right, that was one second. So, if this house was foreclosed on, you're no, not supposed isn't. to be here. It's not foreclosed on. Right. I pay the taxes on it, and it's not foreclosed. Okay. So, since you're saying this is your residence, are you the owner, renter? I am the owner. Your name's on the deed? It is. Okay. It's under a trust, and I am the trustee. All right, go. Can you wait with him for a second? We're going to pull our car up. Yep. And Can you give me my license back, please? In a second. The officer muted the audio on his body camera, explaining that it was for consultation. Most of the body camera footage during the encounter was muted, likely for officer discussions. The Ogden Police Department's policy allows officers to mute or deactivate their body cameras to consult with supervisors or other officers, as long as they document the reason and reactivate the camera afterward. This action likely didn't violate the law or policy. So medical's on their way. Come check out the cut on your head and get you cleaned up. And? And we'll see what they say. Do you need any further treatment? I don't care about the treatment. Well, we do. We need to make sure you're all right. That was a oh, pretty hard well, fall that you took. 
I would be all right if you hadn't thrown me down on the ground. All you had to do, up. all you had to do, was comply with what we we're asking. Look, I'm a 78 year old man, and it took, and you guys had to throw me down on the, on the, on the ice and the pavement and bust my head open. Well, that's what happens when you try to grab me and. I didn't try to grab hey, you. Hey, well, hey, you we're talking. Let's just talk. I wasn't trying to grab you. Now what are you doing to my wife? Just They're just talking to her. Of course she's upset. <laughs> so you drove up West Line stuff and the super we didn't prefer. The officers accused Mr. Bream of interfering with an officer under the relevant section covering acts obstructing arrest or detention. Despite the requirement of a lawful arrest or detention, court case law indicates that a detention without reasonable suspicion may be considered lawful under this statute. In an example case, the court allowed for the possibility that a refusal to show identification during a lawful detention could be seen as interference. Thus, while Mr. Bream may be able to defend his refusal to provide identification, a court may still view his actions as interference under the statute. We are going to cite you with interference with an officer. I'm not going to accept that. That's fine, you don't need to sign. We have between 5 and 14 business days. Contact the courts to get it set up, to get it taken care of. No sooner than 5 business days, okay. no later than 14 business days. Doesn't that say this is not an information and will not be used in information without your permission? No, this, is your, say that? this is your citation. You don't have to sign. You don't have to it, sign. It's not an admission of guilt. Yeah, it's, it's not an admission of guilt. It's just saying you'll acknowledge you'll contact the courts to get it taken care of. Like I said, no sooner than five business days, would no you, later than 14. Would you read that bottom right there for me? What do you mean? Right here? No, further down. Read that, please. This citation is not information, will not be used as information without your consent. If an information is filled and you're provided a copy of the court, you must appear court on or before the time set okay. of this citation. If you fail to appear to court, Initial warrant will be okay, issued for your so arrest. Okay, so I want uh, I want an information. That's what I'm saying. That gets filed by the prosecutor. Well, so yeah, not this the this, okay. this this is not the information. It will not be used in information without my permission. I will not. I it, okay. I'm, I'm so, not accepting. Okay. So, like I said, no sooner than five business days. No later than uh, 14 days. You wait longer than 14 days. A warrant will be issued for your arrest. I recommend contacting the courts. I would recommend you guys please leave. That's what, That's we're, what trying we're trying to do. And you can take that citation with you. Well, I'm going to set this on your car. Huh? One copy for you and one gets filed at the prosecutor's office. All right, you want to stand up, take the cuffs off, and we'll be out of your hair. So why did you come here in the first place? Well, I told you why, Mr. We Green. told you why you we came. You said this place was foreclosed, and you know it isn't. Just get the cuffs. Just get yeah. the cuffs. All right. Ow! 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 Not going to fight when these come off, are you? Just, How the hell am I going to fight? I'm a 78 year old man. Mr. Just Bream, grab the just, post right yeah. there, Mr. Green. Just what? get this handcuffs off. Grab your post. Get just the cuffs off. The post. We don't want you to fall. All right. There you, you guys go. really ought to be proud of yourself. After issuing a citation to Mr. Bream, the officers left without further issue. As of November 2023, the interference charge against Mr. Bream was still pending, 
with the current status unknown. On November 22, 2023, the Breams filed a federal lawsuit against the city and both officers, alleging excessive force and several state law violations. Mr. Bream claimed physical injuries requiring future medical care, while Mrs. Bream suffered physical and emotional damages, including PTSD. In response, the Ogden City PD released a statement asserting that department leaders reviewed the incident shortly after it occurred and deemed the officer's actions justified. The statement expressed confidence that the court would also find the officer's use of force justified based on their internal review.